Hey everyone and welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel. So today we're doing a liquid simulation with Phoenix combined with progressive caustics introduced in V-Ray 5.1 to get a nice summer animation like this of a waterproof Bluetooth speaker. If you're finding these tutorials helpful as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell and select all. This way you will get notified when I upload a new tutorial. So here in Max, I already have my waterproof speaker animated to just spin and we can create a Phoenix liquid grid like this. So under the grid settings, I did 0.4 centimeter cell size for my final simulation to get a nice detail in the water. And let's set the container walls to jam both on all axes so that the water will be stuck inside the box and will not get killed if it reaches the edge. Under dynamic settings, we need to set the initial fill up to, I did 35%. So this means that there will already be water inside of the grid at the beginning of the simulation. So filled up all the way up to the top would be 100%. So 35% will be roughly around here below the third. Let's increase the steps per frame to four because the speaker is spinning pretty fast and we need to be able to capture all of that motion inside the Phoenix simulation. So we need more steps per frame here. Under output, let's output velocity in case we wanna enable motion blur during rendering. And of course, select the path of where you wanna save the cache for the sim. So that's actually all we need to do here. It's a very simple liquid simulation setup. So I'll just start the simulation, make sure that it is working. And it is working beautifully. So for the time being, I actually just lowered the resolution while we set it up. And then for your final simulation, you can increase the settings to get this nice detail in the water. So now to see the mesh, you can just go under preview and say show mesh and you can turn off particle preview so all you see is the liquid mesh. So now we need a light source for our caustics to show up. So under lights, V-Ray, you just want to drag out a V-Ray sun. So under render settings, render set it to V-Ray 5, update 1. So to see what we're actually getting, we can enable the IPR. So here you can click on standard and say enable V-Ray viewport IPR. And it's gonna be super blown out by default. So what you can do is just select the sun and lower the intensity to just something like 0.04. So that's what I did in my example. Now we just need to give a water material to our mesh. So under materials, you can just select an empty slot, select V-Ray, V-Ray material. And here under preset, you can just select water and apply that straight to the Phoenix liquid. And we need some kind of a floor. So I'll just unhide a, just a blue plane that I created earlier. So to get the caustics to show up everywhere, it's important that you raise this photon emit radius under sampling for the sun. So you can see as I increase the value, the radius of the sun basically is increasing. So it's important that you encompass the entire area where you wanna see caustics with um, the cylinder, so to speak. So I'll just raise this up, make sure the entire grid is covered. You want to go under GI, and I'm just using brute force for my primary engine, light cache for the secondary. I'm doing 3000 subdiffs for the light cache, and you, under caustics, you just want to enable caustics and set the type to progressive. Now, Chaos recommends to just leave this search distance value at four, so we're not gonna touch that. So these progressive caustics only work with the progressive rendering. If you set this to bucket, it's not gonna work. So your image sampler type has to be set to progressive. So this means that the image will progressively or gradually improve over time instead of getting rendered with buckets. So I would set the minimum subdiff to one, maximum to four. So I can set the render time to zero, which basically means infinity, which means that the image will keep on improving progressively until it reaches a noise threshold of 0.1. But this can take a long time. So what I did to render out this animation here, I just gave it a limit of 2.5 minutes, which means that the image will gradually keep improving for a maximum of two minutes and 30 seconds, and then it will be interrupted and the next frame will be rendered after that. An important thing, in order for the caustics to show up, you need to make sure that for the water material, you disable effect shadows and set the effect channels to all channels. So with all of that set up, let's just hit render and see if this works. So as it starts rendering, it's gonna look like it's not working, but just give it a few seconds. It has to go through that first and second pass um, to pre-calculate the 
light cache and everything and then the caustics should slowly start showing up so let's give it a few more seconds here i want you to see this so i'm not cutting this part out and here we go right so as it got to pass two pass three the caustics are showing up and it's going to gradually keep improving this image and reducing the noise with more and more passes until it reaches two minutes and 30 seconds and then it will go into the next frame and the next frame so that's how i got the animation again to render out so we have our caustics beautifully showing up this is basically the setup so at this point if you want it to look nicer you can just increase the resolution of the liquid simulations so i would go back under grid set this to like 0.4 centimeters um, increase the steps per frame to something higher and when you render this out you will get something that looks like this so i hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial that you learned something useful as always if you find these tutorials helpful i would appreciate a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell because i will be uploading more tutorials and you don't want to miss out so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one